After pulling out of his fight against Chris Bird with a shoulder injury and simultaneously giving up his WBO heavyweight title in 2000, Vitaly Klitschko's heart and toughness was heavily questioned by the boxing world. Italy was far ahead on the scorecards late in the fight when it seemed suddenly that he retired or quit and we could not understand it. He gave up his title against a guy much, much smaller than him who he was winning against. And uh, you know he was ridiculed by fight fans and frankly by the media, uh, really not given much respect for quitting like that. Because particularly when there's no, you know, you don't see blood, you don't see a guy's eye hanging off or you know, a, a broken nose or some serious injury. You can't, you can't look at a guy and say, oh wow, he's got a shoulder injury. Vitali's response to the doubts over his credentials as a fighter was emphatic. Five wins in the bounce led to an image-reversing blood and guts defeat against WBC and ring champion Lennox Lewis in 2003, where the Ukrainian underdog was up on all of the judges' scorecards when the ringside doctor stopped the bout due to a severe cut above his left eye. With the slugfest being stopped clearly against Vitaly's will, he almost instantly went from being seen as a heartless fighter to a valiant warrior with a desire for greatness. Even though it was not the outcome that Vitaly wanted, he knows that he he uh, gained immeasurable respect for the American public. And my good friend Larry Merchant from HBO put it best after that fight. I always remember that, that Lennox Lewis won the fight, Vitaly won the event. Six months later, Vitaly returned with a quick knockout of Kirk Johnson and then followed it up with a successful revenge mission for brother Vladimir in April of 2004, in which Vitaly systematically broke down Vladimir's conqueror Corey Sanders and got his hands on the WBC title at the second time of asking. again was heavyweight boxing and this crowd for the moment has chosen its champion with his popularity amongst boxing fans growing especially in the place where he had been fighting in the most america vitaly was matched up with britain's danny williams who in his last fight upset mike tyson albeit a faded version of the former undisputed heavyweight champion Again. 
Before toppling Tyson, Williams was mostly known for his fights at domestic level in Britain, which included a night in London in 2000, where he showed a ton of courage by fighting on with a dislocated right shoulder on two separate occasions against opponent Mark Potter. Yes, look, look how limp it is. He yes. can't throw it. He's not throwing it at all. Yeah, there's, a, there's a problem there, definitely. And Potter's seen it. He's going in with a left hook. Stay, what a show of courage from Williams. Anyone else would have walked to the side here. What a show of courage from this man. Danny Williams has been deducted. Three points for low blows, and his shoulder has popped out and back in again. He's been back top. That's the difficulty he has. He's not been allowed to come up. Beautiful right uppercuts. Two right uppercuts from Potter. Williams in serious trouble. From the man from Brixton, he walks into another uppercut. And he showed resilience and good boxing skills here. Right hand lands flash. After Williams' right shoulder popped out of its socket for the second time in the fight in the sixth round, Potter looked on the verge of taking full advantage and forcing a stoppage. However, Williams remarkably flipped the script and halted Potter with a series of knockdowns from left-handed blows. It's completely gone the shoulder. He's using one arm. Again, the guts of the Brixton fighter. I don't know what pain he must be going through in there, Danny Williams. But he hasn't even got a guard with that right hand. What's keeping him in this? Adam, there's a difference between retiring with a bad arm and being knocked out, and he's going to get knocked out if he hasn't got a defence against these punches. And still they clap in the corner. Yeah, but they're clapping him forward. To... in a Rocky movie, you would say they have gone over the top. Since I was a little boy, my dad's always been saying I was going to be world heavyweight champion. And all the time I've been training, I always believed that I was going to be world heavyweight champion. My dad had a dream that I was going to be world champion. And this is where, you know, the dream can come true. Danny Williams destroyed my dream to fight Mike Tyson. And uh, my opinion, Mike Tyson was strongest. After Lennox Lewis, he was the strongest uh, fighter, fighter in the world. But Danny Williams showed for everybody he's stronger than Iron Mike. He knocked him out. My style is not impressive, but very effective. Following a respectful build-up, the Inform heavyweights climbed into the ring at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas on December 11, 2004. 32-3 challenger Williams was ready. 34 and 2 WBC and ring champion Klitschko was ready. But who would prevail? SMB Boxing revisits the action from the opening bell. Round one begins. Shoves the jab into his face. Lands the jab flush on Danny Williams. Right hand for Klitschko lands on the top of Williams' head, and now there's a cut above Danny Williams' right eye. And Williams seems wobbled momentarily by the right he hand. He was in the right hand wobbled in his, his hurt, but he has fought hurt before and fought well. Good body shot by Danny Williams. Good right hand by Klitschko. Again, he lands over the top. Composed and make it through this, it'd be hard for Klitschko. But Klitschko lands a big right hand shot. Williams' hands drop. Danny Williams doesn't seem to think Vitalik Klitschko's a big puncher. Now he backs him off with a left hook. Tries a right hand and takes a right hand in return. Natalia's got a chance for a first round KO here. Similar to his fight against Tyson, Williams found himself in trouble in the first round. But unlike Iron Mike, Vitali was able to punctuate his early success with a knockdown. At this point, though, he's lost his way and he just took a huge right hand flush. The left hand lands. Danny Williams is going to survive the first round battering, but at what cost? After struggling to connect up top in the first three minutes, Williams switched his main attack to the body and landed some decent shots to the midsection area. However, Vitaly continued to dish out the lion's share of punishment, particularly with a strong jab and backhand. Vitaly tried to clean him up with one right hand. That's a good body shot by Williams, and that's what he has to do. Interpreter Jens Holling, who's interpreting Sudunik's German. Williams is 
medium plans, a body shot, and back splits go up. Within these next couple rounds, because if he doesn't, and he lets Danny get in his fight, he can't take this fight like this. Right, Vitaly Klitschko has never been on the canvas. Good body shot by Williams. Good right hand by Vitaly. Oh, low blow by Williams. After getting hit below the belt near the end of the third session, Vitaly almost immediately made Williams pay for his flagrant foul when the action resumed. It would seem like a case of mistaken oh, hook. Oh, good hook. Hook by Klitschko towards Williams. That was about a three-inch left hook. That was stunning. Six, seven, eight. You all right? Yeah. All right. That's what I mean when I say beautiful, Jim. Shots like that. That was side. good. Punch, but two things I noticed, okay? Number one, Vitaly's fight with his mouth open. That's a clear sign that he may be breathing hard. Klitschko doesn't get credit enough for how intelligently he fights because he knows when to throw at the target and when to throw through the target. Getting the swell shot. Oh, a low no. ball game. Oh, no, one way low. Keep him up. Ten has been very effective for Vitaly Klitschko. Works again. You should fight always with his outside. Pepper got to go. And just keep doing what he has to do. Accurate punches by Klitschko. He's not quick enough to get you with the shot you don't see coming very often. This shot by Vitaly. Oh, that hurt. Best right hand since the first round. Williams is hardly fighting back now. I score that a two-point round. As emphasized by commentator Larry Merchant's 10-8 scoring of the fifth frame, Vitaly was now inflicting a brutal beatdown on Williams. But as there was no quit in the gutsy British challenger, he went out on his shield like a true fighter. Williams is showing courage. Not a lot else. It's been too much energy. Do you think, Roy, that Williams at this point has enough strength, enough balance to really land a right hand and hurt Klitschko? Not enough balance, but if he lands it, he could hurt Klitschko, yes. His balance is not good, though. He just went down for the third time in the fight. Klitschko is scared of his left hook. Williams lands it to the body. Oh, Klitschko yes. hurts him with a right hand. Score knockout at that. That's it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. No way. Stop the fight. Jay Nevy has seen enough. At virtually the same moment at which Vitalik Klitschko was declared the winner over Corey Sanders in the eighth round, he gets rid of Danny Williams too. Following the one-sided route. Williams never came close to a world-level fight again and became a gatekeeper and then a journeyman and rather sadly, in our opinion, he still appears to be an active fighter today at the age of 51 with his last outing in the ring coming in August of 2023 and his current record on box rack being 55 wins and 33 defeats. <laughs> In contrast, a bad knee injury in 2005 forced Vitaly to vacate his WBC title and step away from boxing for a prolonged period. Vitaly, listen to me. You can come back better than you've ever been before. However, the Ukrainian was made the WBC's champion emeritus and reclaimed the belt in a dominant eighth round TKO victory over Samuel Peter in 2008. A completely lopsided victory for Vitaly Klitschko, who wins back the WBC Heavyweight Championship in front of his adoring fans. A listless performance by Sam Peter, who loses his belt by quitting on the stool after round eight. But what a tremendous story for Vitaly Klitschko. After becoming a three-time heavyweight champion, Vitaly successfully defended his WBC title nine times in his second reign as champion, and then hung up his gloves for good in 2013 with a 45-2 record. 
boxing aside, Vitaly became actively involved in Ukrainian politics shortly after the Williams fight and currently serves as mayor of Kiev and head of the Kiev City State Administration, having held both offices for over a decade. After overcoming a lot of adversity in his Hall of Fame boxing career, Vitaly's battles outside of the ring have been much bigger and much more important as he has been striving to restore peace and freedom for the people of Ukraine during the war.